Hi, welcome to Hillbilly Garage. We're gonna show you how to build some cool stuff cheap. We're gonna build cars, trucks, and motorcycles. And we're gonna make them go fast. Rusted and broken, abandoned and forgotten. But with a little blood, sweat, and beers, they will live again. Jamie Johnston, the body man. He's chopped, channeled, and slammed more street rods than he can remember. Don Park, the mastermind, a good old nuts and bolts man from way back. He's a walking, talking encyclopedia of auto mechanics. Rod Gilchrist, the tin man. He loves working in metal and can fabricate just about anything, including a story or two. Building street rods and flashy motorcycles, well, it's a mere hobby for some folks. For these boys, it's their life. Heck, they got 10W30 running through their veins. Together, they make up the creative force and foundation known around these parts as Hill Billy Garage. This thing might even run it if we cared. It's even got floors. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you can still find these cars out in the field, but you've got to do some pretty good looking and get off the main road. An original Dixon Motors Winnipeg car. Hey, we even got a trunk lid that opens. And she's nice and clean, nice roof, nice and smooth. Most of the car is still there. If it's rusty, that's not bad, but as long as all the trim is there. You have all the trim pieces, makes building a car very easy and very affordable. This car has all the parts we need. Its body's intact, it's got good glass, it's got good floors. We don't care if it runs or drives, we just want the body. Everything is exactly what we're looking for here. We're not going to have any work to do, it just looks no. ugly on the outside. So what do you think of her? I think it's a winner. Okay, well, I'll go track him down and let's see what we can get this car for. I like it. And then uh, that's when we found, as we call him, Crazy Steve, which is quite a character in himself. This is the first year of the pressurized bearings. It was a nice car, owned her since new, at least the senior part of the family did, Grandpa. Then she passed her down to the old man. There's a lot of sentimental value in her, but I don't know if I can fix them all. She was happy miles. I don't know. Well, what do you want for it? Oh, 600. Uh, Steve, you, well, how about four? 450? Well, how about we do this? I've got four on me. How about we go four? All right. Done deal. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. We'll bring it back and show you it again. Okay, and no thank problem. you for ride, okay, Steve? Oh, I'd love to see that. Give, give me a picture of it. Okay, cool. parts car. We're pretty excited. They're waiting for me to run it up. It's got the motor, the tranny, the rear end, everything we need for this project. <laughs> ah, there. You couldn't wait, eh? No, you should have been here earlier, but I think we got ourselves a good one, you eh? Got a, you almost got me a good one. That's not the only time he's tried to kill me. That's another story. Might not look like much. We paid 400 bucks for this heap. It's got everything we need. Boys are gonna have their way with it. We'll have the parts out in no time. Okay, hold on a minute, Jamie. I'll get this out of here. All right, okay. I'll here. hand that over. Yeah. Where are you going? Yeah, you don't wanna be throwing this, so you will be needing it later. Now let's get after this red. It's got a brand yes. new red. Look, take the clips off. It's a keeper, it's okay, a good it's one. Pretty, yeah. Don't so dribble it all over the front of you. There was a lot of good parts on that car. For some reason, the previous owner 
didn't wash it, didn't clean it, but he kept putting new starters, new rad, new alternator, new everything to keep it going. I don't think we'll be keeping this. Well, the reason you would salvage parts is because you're cheap. <laughs> so you try to reuse everything you can. This is always a fun part, taking the power steering pump off. I'd shoot this because he's going to hit his knuckle for sure. Ow! <laughs> this is where everybody loses some skin. Power steering pumps are always pretty crusty. It's a lot easier with the rad out. As ugly as that car is, it ran good. It was ugly, it was rusty, and it was cheap. The word cheap keeps coming up. Okay, we're getting the hoist ready to pull the motor. Don, you ready over there? You bet you we are. Okay. You do the hook, I'll do the pump. It is hooked, huh? Eh? Okay. Go for it. Now, is everything undone? Oh, I guess we're gonna anything? find out. We're just gonna pull it by the roots. Now the question is, is it gonna leak? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that big enough to leak one in there that thing? <laughs> we gotta get it past the... <laughs> what are you, a beaver? <laughs> <laughs> the way Rod likes doing it, get a two by four or whatever is the closest thing in hand and start prying. Sometimes the crudest things work the best. Oh, it's leaking. Oh, it's a, I'll get the pan. Oh. He totally missed the transmission. <laughs> Here we go, don't move. Okay, now if I step off of this, it's going to tilt, so... Now remember, we're pulling, not pushing, guys. Well, it is fun building cars and working with your friends, but... <laughs> stay now, you stay put and we pull. Oh, hey, 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 we thought we were supposed to be pulling, not pushing. Sometimes it can be maybe a little bit too much fun and it turns into mayhem. Well, that went smooth. We're done with the front. We got everything we need out of here. Let's do the rear end. Okay, drive one, grab a jack, get dirty. We were supposed to sell some parts off the car, which were good parts, like a tinted windshield with an antenna in it. But since the boys were pushing instead of pulling, we lost our windshield. There we go. That's, that's how you get them off the springs. Okay, Rod, come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do this. And there you have a rear end. Now we can take it to the shredder. We got the engine, transmission, rear end, new radiator wiring harness. Anything else we need? I think hungry buzzards have picked this sucker over. Nice doggy. Good boy. That's a good one. Uh, you better not change that channel or old cooter here will rip you a new one. Hey, what's going on? Where's Rod? Oh, we went to go get cheeseburgers. So I guess you and me are going to have to take that uh, front clip off ourselves. As usual again. I'll go get my car off. There's a pretty good reason I ran late with the burgers there, or lack of burgers there. I mean, you can't just leave a pretty girl sitting on the side of the road. Like you're having a spot of trouble. Yeah, I think it's out of gas. Yeah, I can help you with that. You know, I think I see gas leaking out of there. Let me have a look at that.
our sidekick with our food, Don. Oh, well. You know him. We get lost in the rocket, man. I think I see your problem. Come over here and take a look at this. Right in there. What? Take a look right in there. You can see it. Yeah, I don't see anything. Hey, what are uh, you looking at? Hey, where'd you come from? Honey, this man's trying to help us. Can you take the dog for a walk? Yeah, I'll this thing fixed for you in no time. We don't want to be breaking any windows today. No. We need the front windshield. It's an important piece of the vehicle. Go ahead. Okay, now, the now you can go up. Why didn't we keep the original engine? That would have been too easy. The original motor had sat for quite a while, harder to find parts for, and we wanted a car that was dependable. And you can't be the V8. Beautiful. Okay, now, that's it. Shall we do the rear end next? I guess so. Okay, we need rocket rod for that one though. Our cheeseburger man is missing. We'll get here eventually. Ooh, tools. If anybody would have helped. Can't leave a pretty girl sitting on the side of the road. That's wrong. Well, I got up this morning and found me a good breakfast. I had ham and eggs and toast that came from Texas. And I took a look around, saw my taters were hash brown. And I thought about living in this town. I'm done. You're done? Don't. What are you done down there? Oh, there's a leaky gas line. I displace it. Oh, geez, thanks, man. I thought I was out of gas. Well, that's probably why you're out of gas. Mm. Yeah, I'm climbing out of here. Oh, man, thanks. I didn't know what was going on under there. That was great of you. Let me give you some for your trouble, eh? No, forget it. Man. Well, worry, you, know what? you know what? I'm an artist. Sweetie, give me that sculpture I made. You gotta take this, man. Take this, man. I'd, I'd feel a lot better for your trouble. Oh, that's okay. That's real cool. At least take this. I'd feel better about it. Come on. Times may change, but we stay high. Yeah, okay. Oh, great. Okay, Zane, grab the dog. Let's go. Thanks. That's cool. critters under here. <coughs> here we're pulling this rear end out because it's set up for a six cylinder motor and because of this torque tube here which is attached to the rear end there is no adapters for our transmission to bolt onto this and it's not a strong enough rear end for our V8 so what we're going to do is upgrade to the Nova rear end that we took out of the other car. Sounds good to me. It'll have to work. That's all we got. Hey, look what I got. That doesn't look like a burger. No, it's not a cheeseburger, but it's a good story. Okay, we have to undo this steering link right here with a big screwdriver. 
there. Dude, there's no springs that pop out of these things, is there? No, it's safe to do what you're doing. You're not safe. <laughs> Safety first. Watch your fingers. Yo, look at that. It's a gusher. Oh, look at that. We have a first aid kit here, and I'm bleeding. But somebody forgot to put band-aids in the first aid kit. We have gauzes, scissors, tweezers for some unknown reason, but no band-aids. Look at that. Yeah, with old stuff, I usually hurt myself quite a bit. Everything's usually seized or not wanting to come off. So either there's a hammer involved or knuckle skin. We're pulling this old front end out because it doesn't have power steering and it doesn't have disc brakes. And we're updating it to something that would be a lot more user friendly. Everybody's fingers clear? Here she goes. Try that right there, which I don't think it's going to move very easily. Well, these old cars get rusted together pretty good, and uh, you can try as hard as you want to unbolt everything. Sometimes you just got to bust it off. Yeah, there you go. Okay, you pull up, I'll let it down. And you, you just got to love wailing on an old piece of steel. Just stop for a minute. Why is that gone? Well, if you let me move this side ahead, mm -hmm. then maybe it will move over okay. so it will drop out. If you look at it, you find that you can take it apart properly, where you don't have to use brute force. Yes, Don's always coming up with uh, let's think about this first, but by the time you sit down and take a look at it, we could already have it off. Maybe they can just bust this thing off. You try to tell them to do things in a certain procedure, but you're just a dumb old man. I'm not going to listen to you, you know, until they skin their knuckles and start to sweat. Sometimes things just don't come off all that easy, and you have the odd accident every once in a while. When you get older, you learn to uh, accept their ways. <laughs> They'll come around for advice after they're hurting. <laughs> there we go. Oop. That's one front end off. Now with this suspension and the old steering links, it was a very unstable suspension because of this and this. Parts are hard to come by. We we're going to put a new cross member in with a newer style suspension out of a Mustang II, which we'll bring in right away and we can see the difference between the two. Here comes Don with our new cross member that we ordered to make life much easier, which you can see is a lot smaller and cleaner than this big bulky old cross member that we had. And this will slide back into place where we took this one out, but that will be both welded in instead of bolted in, which is a lot stronger. That was on a hillbilly budget. What was that? Well, how much was that thing? $499, so $500 with all our top hats and our pieces. Pretty much anybody could do this in their garage, as long as they have a welder, a tape measure. Most important thing, read the instructions. Because if you don't read the instructions, we're not responsible. <laughs> we're not responsible. <laughs> For anything, not even ourselves. We'll be replacing our old cross member with our new cross member right here, which will be welded into the bottom of the car here, like so. And these are our top new pieces, which eliminate these ones here. What we'll be doing is using these control arms, bottom control arms, coils, spindles, brakes, all onto our new parts. We'll be eliminating this big cross member here also with new strut bars here, which bolt into here, which weld onto a piece that goes onto here, which eliminates all this stuff here so we don't need to use this, which makes it a much cleaner installation and it can all be done in less than a day. The whole thing with doing something like this is just doing it when you're doing it and having fun. Well, let's quit talking about it and let's do it. Okay, here we have our old Chevy motor, which gave us about 125 horse. It was big and just plain ugly. Now here is our other ugly motor that came out of our Nova, which ran really good. Next thing we'll do is we'll pressure wash this motor, clean it up, change a couple of gaskets on it, 
and give it a fresh coat of paint and that's all it needs before we reassemble it into the car. Stay tuned, the boys continue ripping into that old car. We've installed our front end as per instructions. We've tack welded it into place. We've put the engine and transmission in and we've mocked up the motor mounts to where they're going to be, where everything fits. On this side, we found that there would be steering problems, so we notched the frame and the top hat. And on this side, we've notched the top hat for fuel pump clearance. We have notched the old firewall braces for valve cover clearance. Well, with every car that you do, every frame is never the same. So you have some cars that have narrow frames, some cars that have wide frames. When you're putting the motor in, the motor always stays the same size. Small block Chevys never change. So in the Chevy, it was a medium sized frame. So we had to do some figure eighting to go to get the motor, the exhaust, and the steering in the car and the fuel pump. If you notice, this is perfectly straight. In order to get that, we had to slightly cut the coil springs. We also had to change the angle that our rack sits at. That uh, gives us a better angle for the U-joints we're going to have to put in on the steering linkage. Well, I think we should pull the motor out so we can finish welding all our suspension before we go any farther. Well, let's yank it. These headers were just mocked on for our fitting purposes. You, you gotta take your time to do this or you'll make yourself crazy later. Trust me. <laughs> it's coming from a wise man. <laughs> when you're building a car, you never just put something in and just leave it because every reaction has a chain reaction. And if you put a motor in, without checking your exhaust or checking your steering, and you've welded all your brackets across and you have nowhere to put the exhaust, that's why you have to fit things, take things out, look what you have, put them back in, and each time you do something like a master cylinder, steering, exhaust, rad, everything's gotta go in and come back out. So you have to play with things, which means putting it together, taking it apart. Seems kind of senseless, but in the long run, you save yourself a lot of time. Okay, you guys can weld that up, and I will take this apart. You always put one of these on or you get a big black ring around your head. This is my favorite part of the job, beautifying this ugly looking motor and making it look new. The hillbilly rebuild. <laughs> 200 mile an hour paint. Now hopefully you can see down into the belly of this boat here that uh, this is our aftermarket master cylinder uh, adapter. Our brake pedal pushes through the floor here and it moves the linkage and the master cylinder mounts underneath the car way down at the back there. It's a nice little update and the, the little kit we got worked nicely. All in all, we got pretty lucky with this one. It wasn't too hard of a job. To restore a car or to modify it, that question's gone around for a long time. Restoring a car doesn't take much imagination. Because all you're doing is taking something apart and putting it back together. But when you modify it, you're actually building something. Hopefully you're making it better. We took the springs out, took them to the spring shop and had them de arced Then we added aftermarket axle pads to the housing and then we installed lowering blocks. We've also added the shock mounts from the 53 Chevy. When lowering a car, make sure you have ground clearance for a manhole cover. Other than that, you should just be fine. When lowering a car, leave room for the mechanic under it later. Mechanics are like brakes, not needed. It's not low enough for me. And that power brake cylinder, we really didn't need that. Because you know me, I don't use brakes. That's what, that's what speed bumps are for. If your car is low enough, it'll slow you down. 
When it comes to custom cars, there's really no rules. I have a much more subtle taste than, let's say, Jamie. He's very radical with his stuff. I don't like to be bothered by the police when I'm driving. So I like to keep my stuff kind of tame, conservative, and functional. As you can see, Jamie's done a nice pearl orange paint on the engine. He just brightens it up a bit. It should be ready to run for a long time. Uh, the front end has been completely reassembled with all new parts. We've got our suspension all done with all new pieces. We've got our steering working. We've got our uh, complete wiring harness from our parts car installed. We've yet to hook up the ends. This should work and run the way it is pretty much right now. It's all ready to go. The tough part about putting the hood on is getting your fingers in there without losing them to do the bolts up. Putting a modern powertrain in it is a nice touch. You just, it's more efficient and drivable. Well, we put the engine transmission all in the car and wired it up. It ran fairly decent in the car before we took it apart, so it should be okay. This is our favorite part of a project. This is when we can hear it run and see it work. We're pulling it out to try it out on the road here. <laughs> it's alive! Lives again. Good thing to see it's all working so far. So? Now what do you think? I think You're right, the windows are too high. The windows are too big. Somebody could fall out of there, it's not safe. I think we should take at least four inches out of it. And we gotta bring the front end down another inch. It's still too high, we clear speed bumps, that's not a good thing. So, next thing is, let's chop the roof. Let's push it back in. I'm driving it back in. Okay, drive it Let's back go do in. some donuts. <laughs> on the next episode of Hillbilly Garage. I'm letting Jamie decide where to chop the roof, that way we can blame him if it doesn't fit later. The Hillbillies peel the lid off that old Chevy. This is where he said he wanted it cut, so it's going off. But not everybody agrees on how much to take out. Personally, I wouldn't take out four inches. Sometimes I think you can go too far with the chop. Rod gets fired up. See me, I'm on fire again. Rod's on fire! and lets off a little steam. Now it's a wrap. Find out how the transformation ends on the next episode of Hillbilly Garage.